Hello, everybody. Welcome to an episode of On Location, which is usually with myself, Marco Ciappello, Hello. and Sean Martin. Uh, we just fresh from our SA conference in San Francisco, and the summer is the season of On Location coverage, and I couldn't be more happy than actually today to talk about uh, a big event in Europe about technology. It's called Viva Tech. We have the managing director here with us, and I had the pleasure to talk to Francois Bilduzet last year, and uh, I, I hope I pronounce your last name correctly. And uh, it's funny. We were just having fun. It's an Italian and a French trying to have a podcast in English, and we'll, we'll do our best, but for sure, it will be entertaining, and it will be full of passion. How about that, Francois? I fully agree, and I think the it's not the language like French or Italian. The question is the, the language of tech. And I hope it will be a good discussion with the language of tech. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if there is something that makes me excited, it's talking about technology you know, and all the things that it's doing in society. I think last year we didn't talk about generative AI. It's probably the year of generative AI this year as well as many, many other things. And as I mentioned, Francois, I would like for you to introduce yourself for people that didn't listen to you last year, they don't know who you are, and then we can dive in. But I just want to say that this is, uh, this is already, I believe, the eighth edition of eight, the tech eight, yeah, yeah. and has become the event about technology and society and all that, 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 that matters to, to everybody living technology this day, uh, in Europe. So, uh, I want to know what's about to happen in a few days. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. It's a lot of pressure, and uh, but uh, it's uh, the eighth edition of Bivatech. Uh, so Bivatech or Biva Technology, we are a tech, digital, and startup uh, event. Uh, in uh, eight years, we have managed to become the, the, the biggest uh, event uh, in, uh, in in Europe, and true that now. We are invisible in the tech and business global uh, global agenda. Uh, we do things. Uh, we try to make something special or at least useful. So we are not trying to do like the other events because big events like the CS they are already exist. They do a great job, and so we wanted to to bring something new uh, on the on the tech and digital things. So basically, we are focused on B two B B two B approach. And what we try to do, we try to bring around the table all the stakeholders uh, in uh, innovation. So we have startups, so we have uh, more than 3,000 startups. Uh, we have, of course, tech champions like uh, Google, Meta, IBM, Microsoft, Amazon. Uh, what is very unique is also we have a lot of uh, uh, corporate uh, uh, companies uh, something like uh, uh, 300 uh, global leaders in their own sectors. So, for instance, we have LVMH for uh, luxury. Uh, we have uh, Tesla for cars. We have Airbus for um, aerospace, etc., etc. In 25 uh, uh, business sectors. And last but not least, we also have uh, the public sectors. Uh, just to give you an example, this day we will have. Uh, 40 national pavilions. So it makes VivaTech a kind of world expo uh, of tech and digital. And all these people, they met in Paris, coming from 120 countries. And we tried to make it like a, like a mess, something very chaotic. And uh, from this chaos, you bring and you, you can take uh, business, a lot of business, inspiration with a key speakers. Last year, we were so proud to have uh, Elon Musk and a lot, a lot of fun because we consider that uh, tech, it's about fun at the end of the day. Yeah. And I, I love how you, you made a comparison with the world fairs of many years ago. That's where, you know, when you had the new innovation coming, like the Edison presenting the electric bulb or you know, very, very important things and people will come from all over the places to, to do that. Now, it's easier to travel, but I feel like the excitement is still the same. It may be more chaotic. There is a lot more technology. And 
and it's I feel like it's where event like yours, Viva Technology, is where you feel the pulse of the economy, as you said, the innovation, and what is the government doing about it? Of course, yes. with AI, we need guardrails. We all hear about this. So the fact that you put it all together, I hope something very, very good comes out of that. Yes, this is exactly what we try to do uh, every year. And uh, I think for us, it's very important to consider that tech and digital, um, it doesn't um, belong just to tech people. Um, in France, uh, one hundred years ago, after, uh, during World yes. War I, we had a, a prime minister and you say that war is too important to, to be just for soldiers. And I think at the attack, we have the same conviction, the fact that tech and digital, it's so important in our lives, in a business, job, democracies, and everything that we do as human beings on this planet. It's too important just for, uh, to, to, to be left to, uh, take people. Of course, they are important. I mean, uh, there's no issue, but let's bring also, uh, citizen, general public, uh, uh, business decision makers, policy makers, because it's very, very important. So this is also, and maybe it's the European way of uh, thinking about, uh, about technology, but I can tell you that this is what is very exciting at the uh, Alivatech. And I think also, it gives um, a complementary approach uh, of tech and digital Be because very often you have the feeling that um, uh, tech is a kind of dilemma. On the on the one hand, you have the uh, the U.S. model uh, Silicon Valley. On the other hand, you have the Chinese model, very uh, you know government and everything, and nothing in between. And at Viva Tech, what we like the the most is to bring all the models, the tech and digital models from all over the world. Uh, this year, Japan is country of the year. We have India. We have a lot of uh, African countries, the Middle East, Asia, and, and it's great because there's so much uh, multiplicity in the tech world that it gives people the possibility to make up their mind and to choose with the right vision of what is possible, what is not possible what they want and what they don't want. And I think it's part of the pleasure that you can, you can take from, uh, from the Latex. Yeah. And, and I agree with you. It's about the collaboration. It, there are no boundaries anymore, right? We, we live in a connected world. We live in the internet where there are no boundaries. We need to collaborate all together. And I love the fact that you do that. But I'm uh, curious. But if I may, yeah. I think you. You're right and you're wrong at the same time. Okay. Let's yeah. go there. Why? Tell no, me. No, I, no, no, but I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm talking about it. It's very important. Uh, what you say is true. It's the fact that innovation, uh, it's about connection. You know, the mythology of the guy alone, uh, uh, in his room, uh, creating, uh, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't exist anymore. I'm not even sure that it never happened really in that book, mm -hmm. uh, in the, in the past. But the truth is that uh, an idea can come uh, from uh, Taiwan, but you need to have a connection with people of the, in the U.S. Uh, to have a, a, a blog from AI. You need people uh, in, uh, for instance, uh, in Spain for uh, I don't know blockchain, etc. And so it, it's global. But uh, and I think it's, innovation is global now. But we are living a very special moment in the human history where the the, the, the world, as we used to know it, is a little bit uh, changing. Uh, we've got uh, the conflict uh, between uh, uh, Ukraine and, uh, and Russia, uh, tension between uh, uh, China and the US, and it's the same for tech. And you see that uh, boundaries are back, frontiers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think what is interesting at Viva Tech, it's a place, it's a kind of safe place where you have all the nations, all the people, and try to create again this unique uh, global planet uh, of tech. And I can tell you that at this very moment, it's something important and not always uh, as easy as uh, it seems. No, I agree with you. I mean, I, I think you need to foster the individual country 
the way that they create education and they, they make thrive their, their innovation. But as, as you said, sometimes you need the convergence of different technology in order to make the cream de la cream, sorry, de la cream de la cream happen. Uh, so that, that's the beauty of it. Um, give me, I know already, because I looked at the website, you have some incredible keynotes. Last year you had, a uh, you had Elon Musk and, and this year you have somebody that I understand used to play tennis, what? uh, talking there. So give me, give me a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of teaser for who is going to be leading the keynotes this year. Yeah. So we've, we've got something like, uh, 100 keynotes and, uh, sessions, uh, fire chat, uh, et cetera. Uh, I think we will, uh, we, we try to have the, as you said, creme de la creme for AI. So that's for sure. So, uh, for instance, uh, we will have, uh, uh, Yann Lequin, uh, Je, Je Trois Benjo, so I mean, uh, Turing prizes, uh, uh, together, uh, we will have also, uh, people from open AI, uh, from, uh, Entropy, uh, Run, uh, Runway, uh, also from, uh, NVIDIA. So, you, you know, we have, uh, I think key players in, uh, in AI and also we will have, uh, a lot also of, um, um, CEOs, CMOs, uh, we will have, uh, for instance, uh, Bernard Arnault. Uh, the, the, the CEO of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, LVA match. We will have a lot of, uh, uh, tech and digital leaders from all over the world. For instance, Robin Weed, uh, the, the CEO of, uh, Baidu, uh, Miki Tanisan, the CEO of, uh, Rakuten, Eric Schmidt. I think there, there's no need to introduce him. And also a lot of people who are making the, the world of tech, uh, moving and changing, for instance, uh, uh, I, I like her so much, uh, Meredith Whitaker, uh, from, uh, from Signal, um, um, Linda Yacarino from, uh, from X Twitter. So you see, uh, uh, a large, large, uh, uh, spectrum of, uh, of speakers. Also, we will have John Kerry, uh, and I think he will, uh, tell us a lot of things about sustainability. Uh, Charles Michel, he's the president of the European Council and people who have, uh, a vision on tech and digital. So we were talking about tennis. We have a crowd because this year we will have Serena and Venus Williams on stage. Uh, so we are super excited. Uh, first, because they have, they haven't been together on stage, uh, for a long, long time. So I think in for, for, for years. And also, you know, they are a very important investors, uh, in tech and digital now. And so they will tell us about, of course, sport and tech, uh, is, uh, in investing in tech, uh, like, uh, like a sport, like, a, a fight sport, etc. I think it's going to be something very, uh, um, something to, 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 to remember. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember from last year, you had president Macron, if I remember yeah. while he was speaking yeah. and I see again, uh, the president of the European council, you had John Kerry. I see politician, I see people from the government getting involved because it's very important to be prepared for where technology is going to go and don't be surprised eventually, hopefully not as human often do that we found ourselves in a situation we were making fun before start recording yeah. about being in the metrics and we don't want to be there. That's <laughs> so it's important to have these guardrails, uh, when we talk about many, many topics in technology. How do you choose the, I mean, technology is everywhere. You know, every company is a technology company nowadays. How do you choose the main themes for, for the event? Like, of course, AI, but I know you focus on many other things. Is there like a, a market research? How, how do you d decide to highlight certain topics? Yeah. For instance, this year we have AI and also sustainability because we really want to link both, uh, both questions. And we really want to have a concrete approach. We are not here to tell you what will happen in, uh, in 20 years. Uh, as I was saying, like, uh, we will all be, uh, like Kino Reeves in the Madrid, the draft. We want to see things now for people to understand and to understand the opportunities, uh, but also the, the, the risk, um, for, for, for your questions, we have a team here of, uh, uh people who are focused on, uh, uh, on the content and they spend their year 
traveling, going to other conferences, reading, meeting people. We have also the opportunity to have at VivaTech, as I said, startup tech leaders, uh, government, uh, corporate sector, and we meet all of them. And to be honest, it's not a, uh, it's not a scientific uh, method. It's something that comes from uh, the air du temps, uh, the, the, the context and, uh, and everything. And I think it's very important uh, when we think that something is interesting for people, uh, it happens uh, usually 10 months before the, before the event. When we've got something, we, we, we start to discuss with a lot of people outside of uh, VivaTech, friends and family, uh, key partners, some journalists, etc. And so we try at the end of the, um, of the year to have something uh, concrete and, uh, and, uh, and solid. And to be honest with you, very often, because this is tech, I mean, tech is changing uh, all the time, and this is what is, uh, what is uh, expecting. We've got something in September, October, and in January, we're like, oh my God, it doesn't work anymore. People don't care about this. There is something so big coming. And so we have to do it again from, uh, from start part of the game. I mean, it's like a, like a media and uh, it's uh, also, th this is the, the heart of, uh, of tech. It, uh, the, the pulse is, uh, it's very, very uh, important and we are very happy to be the reflection of the, of the rhythm of, uh, of uh, uh, the, the rhythm of tech, definitely. Yeah. And just to give an idea, I mean, I have all this conversation on, on my show, Redefining Society. It's all about technology and how it affects in society, but you have I'm reading here, you know, gaming and sports, of course, that, that's important. Creator's economy, that's relatively new, but something that it's, it's a big industry. I mean, uh, you can't uh, not talk about that. But then one very important, internet and democracy. So how, yeah. how did you guys decide that to have that? I think for us, it, it, it was quite obvious because uh, uh, here in Europe, in, uh, in a few weeks, we will have a, a European uh, election for the European Parliament. So it's something very, very important. And we know that at this moment, especially with AI, there are a lot of, uh, um, of uh, fears about what will happen to democracy because we see the impact sometimes of uh, digital and new tech solution on the on, 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 on the on democracy uh, itself, you see that uh, with the social media, with the fair, with deep fake, etc., you can make people believe things that are wrong, and it can have an impact on uh, the, the the people they really want uh, as a president or a prime minister, etc. And for us, it was very important not to avoid this kind of question, but it put them uh, in the light and to have best in class at a global, uh, at a global scale and to discuss, to find solutions. Uh, we will have a lot of startups with uh, concrete solutions. For example, uh, we have a uh, Japanese, um, we have a Japanese uh, startup. They are called Citadel AI. And their idea is to consider that we, we need to create a kind of guardians of AI, meaning that if you are a company and if you want to implement the new AI uh, tech product, they are here to tell you. Here are the rules yeah, that you need to follow for your, uh, your AI to be compliant with democracy, respect uh, data, IPs, uh, etc. And I think um, AI and tech and democracy, it can be very, very important, very powerful. However, at this moment, there are so many questions that we need to find answers. So it was for Europe, but also uh, in the US, you have the presidential uh, election. And we know that tech is key now uh, in the way democracy is uh, implemented. And I think also that tech has to be part of the discussion for the new president, for the new uh, uh, people that we will uh, uh, vote for, because it's so important. I mean, it's as important as uh, uh, the, 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 the price of the uh, uh, of oil, uh, I mean, everything. And very often, not considered in the general uh, uh, debates, whereas it's key. And I think this is also why at VivaTech, you know, it's a four-day uh, four event. Three days are dedicated to B2B uh, attendees. And the last day, it calls the general public. 
So you can come with your family, you can be a kid, you can be a senior, you are not a geek, you are not working in, in tech, but you can have access to VivaTech, to everything. And I think it is what we, I was talking about, about democracy and tech. It's very important to bring people to tech. Otherwise, they are afraid of tech. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. Whereas tech can be such an empowerment. And so this is also part of our, of our commitment to tech. Yeah, I, I love that because many of the conferences that I that I go to in cybersecurity or in tech, they are they're B two B, and then and then I have to be the one that translate it to, for the audience, right? Uh, the fact that they can come there is still a, very much a connection with the the World Trade Fair, where people could go and experience and get excited, but also no. Because knowledge is power, is how to interact and not have the fear of, you know, they're powerful technology, but it, the, the, the scary part is when you, you think is, I don't know, the volcano, the God volcano that you don't understand how it was, and then you have fear of it, and you think it's something that is not. So I love the fact that people are coming there. Is there anything that you want to highlight that is different from last year? So, or maybe the year before, anything that it's new in this system of how the, the event runs. Uh, I think that this year we will try to have a, um, even more important focus on the, on business side, you know, for the startup, it's very difficult at, at this moment to find, uh, investors, uh, money is very difficult to, to find and to Advivatech, we really want to be um, a, a business platform. Uh, I mean, we have the, 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 the startups, they come with their innovation, amazing innovation. We have the corporate sectors, they have the money, they can be clients. We have also the, the, the public sector and, you know, they are very important also in the development, the economical development of the, of the startup. And we really want the startup when they leave VivaTech to say, okay, guys, we have made up to uh, 25% of uh, our annual leads because it's part of the, of the promise of, and the commitment of, uh, of VivaTech. And we will try to do that uh, with very VivaTech style uh, ways. Just I give you an example. This is something I, I'm very, uh, I hope it will be uh, it will be a success. We, we will privatize uh, a street in Paris. It's called Rue Montorgueil. It's a very par Parisian street, like uh, Emily in Paris, if you want. Mm -hmm. There are bars everywhere. And so we have uh, uh, investors and we have corporate sector. They, they, they pay to have a bar. And if you are a startup, you come and they, they, and they offer you a drink, a beer. And so we will have 3,000 uh, founders, uh, uh, CEOs of startup working in the street, going from bar to bar, drinking beer, discussing business. I hope they won't be drunk. Uh, uh, yeah. To past, but you see what I mean? It's about, it's about business, so the tech, and it's about Viva, it's about a celebration. So let's try to make business because at the end of the day, this is what people need when you are in tech and especially if you are a startup, but let's try to do it in a, in a fun way because I mean, uh, it's, it's part of the DNA of tech and digital. Yeah. And I, I want to end this with this connection, like the community on the website. You list that there is 2,100 exhibitors. There is the fourth stage with all the speakers, but then it, there is one title that says, find your tribe. Yeah. And I really like, I, I kind of see how you're really trying to connect people at the human level in a very European way, right? It's not just about the money or just about the technology, but it's about connecting with the people and maybe decide, Hey, let's build something together. Let's invest together because. Again, we connect. We do this a lot in France and Spain and Italy. You know, we're we're just like that. And and I I love the fact that you're bringing this to to the forefront. So I hope that people will not be a little bit too drunk to then make the right decision. But they're sure loosen up a little. Yep. Bit. I, you know, when the when when the team they told me, okay, we will do that in the street Montagueil, and they told me it has to be on the first evening of VivaTech, and I was there. Oh my God. <laughs> like, are you sure it's a good idea? Stupid me. And I said, yes, of course, of course. I said, yes. Yeah, sure. But why not? 
what, what, what you say, uh, I think it's very important because we are living in a world uh, more and more uh, focused on efficiency, zero risk. I mean, people don't want to take risk uh, anymore, etc. So let's make uh, a little space to surprise, to change, to luck. And I think this is the important thing with, with event. Uh, an event, uh, of course, it's about uh, sessions, it's about uh, pavilions, uh, it's about uh, uh, features, etc. But at the end of the day, it's about people in the same place and the same moment and things that never happen usually will happen. I give you one example. Last year, uh, Bernard Arnault, so uh, uh, maybe the, the, the racist uh, uh, man on earth, uh, the boss of uh, LVMH, he was visiting v VivaTech from uh, startup to startup. And I remember the young founder uh, from Korea, he jumped on him, so bodyguard, right? but at the end, they, they discussed together. And uh, the day after, uh, the guy of innovation from LVMH called the startup and said, we would like to discuss with you. I can tell you, it happens at Avivatech. I'm not telling you that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. Tell you, it happens at Vivatech. I love it. I love it. Well, Francois, I am so excited for you to get this going. I know everything is ready to go. They're just sitting there waiting for the door to open. So it's everything is going to be perfect. And... <laughs> And I'm very happy that you found the time again to come back on the show on ITSP Magazine and give us an overview of uh, what is going to happen there. We're a big fan of Viva Tech and all you do for technology and society. So again, thank you very much. Good luck. Uh, Viva Tech will take place again in Paris, if you haven't figured it out, May 22nd to the 25th. So about to happen. And uh, thank you again for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you uh, for your kindness. And thank you for sharing this love for tech and digital. And so we will try to be at the level of expectations that you have. All right. I'm sure. I'm well, sure. Take care, everybody. Stay tuned. There'll be more stories here on, uh, on location with me and Sean when he's here with me. But I always have great guests. So I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you, everybody.